Manchester City, the club currently on the top of English football, one of the two biggest clubs in the world that call Manchester their home. There is no doubt Manchester City is currently one of the biggest clubs in the world. But how did they even get here? How did a club that was languishing in the third division in not so distant past conquer England? Well, we take a look at the transformation of this historic club in England conquering behemoth. Here is the story of the rise of Manchester City. Before we delve into how Manchester City got to where they are, it is important we delve into the history of this club. Now unlike what people online would say, Manchester City does have a lot of history and not all of it is of failure. The club was officially founded in 1894, though its origin can be traced back to 1880 when it was founded as St. Mark's West Gorton which became Ardwick Association Football Club in 1887 before it finally became Manchester City in 1894. Now, we would love to make a video detailing the history of Manchester City, so let us know in the comments if you'd like one. But it is important to note that Manchester City at one point was the bigger club in Manchester. They were also the first of the two big Manchester clubs to win the FA Cup when they beat Bolton Wanderers 1-0 in the final in 1904. They won their first ever First Division League title in 1937, the same season Manchester United were relegated. In fact, the 1930s offered a stark contrast in the fortune of the two Manchester clubs as while Manchester City were making cup runs, Manchester United were at the brink of bankruptcy, only saved by James W. Gibson. But it's a story for another time. Manchester City also shared their home stadium, Main Road, where they moved in 1923 with Manchester United during the Second World War as Old Trafford was damaged during the war. While we're skipping large parts of Man City's history at the moment, any mention of City's history pre-Abu Dhabi era is incomplete without mentioning their most successful era during this time, the late 1960s, early 1970s. 1967-68 season saw Manchester City win their second ever first division league title when they beat Newcastle United on the last day of the season 4-3 beating Manchester United to the title. More success followed when they won the FA Cup in 1969. It all became even sweeter when Manchester City won their first ever European Cup, winning the European Cup Winners' Cup in 1970. The same season, they also won the League Cup, becoming only the second team in the English history to do a European and a domestic cup double. Players like Mike Summerby and Colin Bell were largely responsible for such performances. However, 1970s also saw the beginning of the decline of the club. From the manager merry-go-round to the boardroom instability, they soon found themselves become a relegation fodder, yo-yoing between the first and second division. Though the darkest day in the club's history must have been the relegation to the third division which was called second division due to Premier League and English football pyramid. They became only the second ever club to be a European trophy winner who got relegated to the third division. They bounced right back up by winning a dramatic playoff against Gillingham that saw Paul Dickov score an equaliser in the dying moments to help City bounce back from two goals down and eventually win on penalties. Back-to-back -back promotions saw City come back to Premier League, though they were relegated again in 2001. Kevin Keegan took over as the manager and won an immediate promotion back to the Premier League by winning the first division title. 2003 4 close season also saw Manchester City move from their much beloved home, Main Road, to the city of Manchester Stadium. 
City were now firmly established as a Premier League mid-table club, finishing between 16th and 8th position since moving to the new stadium. However, things were about to change soon. In 2007, the club found a silver lining. Former Thai Prime Minister Thaksin Chinawatra acquired a 75% stake in the club for £81.6 million and installed former England manager Sven Goran Eriksson as manager. His reputation was at best sketchy as he was embroiled in a litany of corruption charges back home. Nevertheless, there was hope that the takeover will help Manchester City climb back up the Premier League ladder. Players worth around £60 million were brought in and Manchester City started playing some attractive football. Money was spent on the likes of Elano, Valery Bozhinov and Vedran Korluka. The season started brightly and early in the season, Manchester City won the Manchester derby, winning at home against United 1-0. City kept a pace for most of the early and mid-season part as they hovered around 5th position. However, the early momentum of the season soon dissipated and City slipped all the way to 9th by the end, which ended with a humiliating 8-1 defeat away at Middlesbrough. City did manage to qualify for the UEFA Cup based on the UEFA fair play points, but it wasn't enough to save Eriksson's job. Ericsson was then summarily sagged with Mark Hughes taking over. With his assets frozen and City in a financial turmoil, Shinawatra was looking to sell the club. Enter Sheikh Mansour. Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talks. Here comes the money. For years, Manchester City was everybody's favorite second club and everyone's favorite joke. Manchester United even had a ticker counting how many years Manchester City had gone without winning any trophies. Despite brief spells of success, Manchester City largely was a club that took a step forward only to go several steps back. Thaksin Chinawatra's takeover brought promise, but it all soon dissipated and the club was in financial turmoil. Amidst all the noise came the sight of a silver lining. Sheikh Mansour bin Zayed Al Nahyan, a member of the UAE royal family, had arrived with his Abu Dhabi United Group or AUDG to take over the club. Their arrival wasn't unprecedented as just five years ago, another club in Chelsea was bought by the Russian billionaire Roman Abramovich and his deep pockets helped Chelsea establish themselves amongst the big wigs of the Premier League, namely Manchester United, Arsenal and Liverpool. Manchester City had a distinct advantage of being situated in a big city, had a loyal support and a big stadium. According to Suleiman Al Fahim, who represented Sheikh Mansour at the time, they saw Manchester City as a top four club and wanted to make it one of the biggest in England. Soon, Manchester City's fortune was going to turn. Within hours of acquisition, the city ownership decided to splash the cash, signing Robinho for a then record fee of £32.5 million from Real Madrid. They also launched unsuccessful bids like the £30 million for Tottenham Hotspur's Dimitar Babatov, who decided to go to the red side of the Manchester. According to reports, City also bid for the £30 million rated David Villa of Valencia and Mario Gomez of Stuttgart. In fact, Sky Sports reported City could have bid for as many as six top superstars that day. Manchester City's new owners had come with a clear vision. They wanted to make Manchester City the top club in the land. Despite the failure of landing all their transfer targets, City still made a huge splash with incoming players like Joe. Vincent Company, Pablo Zabaleta, Sean Wright Phillips, Craig Bellamy, Nigel De Jong, Shea Given, etc. for over £100 million. However, it didn't bring instant success. Under Mark Hughes, Manchester City ended 10th in the league. And while they did well to reach the UEFA Cup quarterfinals, the season proved to be an overall disappointment. However, this city management wasn't going to stop. 
2009-10 season yet again saw an influx of a lot of new players to the tune of over 100 million pounds spent again. The biggest acquisitions were Manchester United's Carlos Tevez and Arsenal's Emmanuel Adebayo and Colo Toure. Despite a promising start yet again, a series of draws mid-season meant Mark Hughes' time was up. Manchester City appointed Roberto Mancini and he had an immediate impact. City ended the season at 5th, qualifying for the Europa League playoff round and showed marked improvement in quality of football. In Mancini, they had signed a quality coach. And due to the cash spent in the market, the quality of players was quickly improving. However, the season yet again ended trophyless. 2010-11 season proved to be the turning point for Manchester City in many ways. As usual, City splashed the cash, bringing in names like Yaya Toure from Barcelona, David Silva from Valencia, Mario Balotelli from Inter, James Milner from Aston Villa, Jerome Boateng from Hamburg and Edin Dzeko from Wolfsburg to a tune of over £140 million. Under Mancini's continued stewardship, City's results in the Premier League improved dramatically as they climbed up to the third position, the highest position since the inception of Premier League. This meant they also qualified for the UEFA Champions League for only the second time since 1968-69 season when it was called the European Cup. But the biggest achievement for them this season was winning the FA Cup, ending the 35 years of trophy drought. The triumph was made all the sweeter as City beat their city rivals Manchester United in the semi-final 1-0 before beating Stoke City in the finals. Carlos Tevez was instrumental through the campaign as he bagged 23 goals in all competitions, 20 of them coming in the Premier League, earning him the Premier League Golden Boot Award that he shared with Dimitar Berbatov of Manchester United. Joe Hart won the Golden Glove Award, keeping 18 clean sheets while Company and Tevez made the PFA Team of the Year. It was clear that the team was improving at the rate of knots and the trophies that Manchester City's owners craved so much were on their way. While 2010-11 was a breakout season for them, 2011-12 season was when they truly arrived. The splashing of the cash continued as City acquired the services of the likes of Gal Kleche and Sami Nasri from Arsenal and Stefan Savic from Partizan. But the biggest acquisition for them was the Argentine striker Sergio Aguero from Atletico Madrid for a reported fee of £36 million. Aguero made an immediate impact as he scored a brace on his debut off the bench against Swansea City. Aguero thinks about the shot, will go for it and will plant an absolute cracker into the corner. Manchester City led the table for most of the season over their rivals Manchester United that included a 6-1 drubbing of United at the Old Trafford. However, United overtook them on game week 28 and a few draws and losses meant Manchester United had taken the lead. However, five wins on the trot brought both Manchester City and United level on points on the final day of the season. City were ahead on goal differential which meant all they had to do was win against QPR to lift the Premier League for the first time in 44 years. It is said that money can't buy everything and failure had become such a part of Manchester City's DNA that winning against a relegation threatened QPR at home was far from given. And so it was proving to be, as despite an early goal by City, QPR took the lead. In one of the most dramatic ends to a Premier League season, City entered the injury time down one goal to two. And while Manchester United wrapped up a 1-0 victory at Sunderland, something miraculous transpired at the Etihad. Something that words cannot describe. With just the injury time left to play, Aaron Dzeko equalised. But it wasn't going to be enough. And then the clock struck 93-20. Balotelli, Aguero! I swear you'll never see anything like this ever again! 
Manchester City had won their first ever Premier League title. A 44-year wait for a top-flight league title had come to an end. After such a historic season, Manchester City entered the 2012-13 season as the defending Premier League champions. There was an air of optimism around. While some big names like Mario Balotelli left, some big transfers in meant Manchester City were still looking forward to more silverware. They had a settled spine of Aguero, Toure, Silva, Company, Zabaleta, etc. Alongside some really exciting young players like Micah Richards and Jack Rodwell. However, the season didn't turn out as everybody was hoping for. A slow start meant Manchester City were lagging behind for most of the season and never recovered to challenge the eventual champions Manchester United. They finished second by 11 points. Combine it with a complete no-show in Champions League where they failed to win a single game and crashed out completely at the group stage and Roberto Mancini's job was in jeopardy. The final straw however was the FA Cup where despite a great run till the final Manchester City lost to Wigan Athletic the same club that got relegated from the Premier League this very season Mancini was sacked on May 13, 2013 and Manuel Pellegrini was appointed the manager a month later 2013-14 season under Manuel Pellegrini proved to be a success. This season saw Carlos Tevez leave for Juventus but also saw likes of Fernandinho join the club. Despite a shaky start, City recovered spectacularly. This was also a season where City ended up scoring over a century of goals in the Premier League. This season is also remembered for the infamous Steven Gerrard slip against Chelsea that effectively ended Liverpool's campaign for the Premier League. Manchester City ended up winning the Premier League title for the second time. They also won the League Cup, making it a domestic league and cup double. This was also the first season Manchester City made out of their Champions League group. However, they were defeated by Barcelona in the round of 16, ending with another Champions League disappointment. Nevertheless, with two Premier League titles in the last three seasons, it seemed like Manchester City had established themselves as a permanent title contender. Despite all the success they had till now, the next two seasons were less than favourable for Manchester City. The big money transfers had continued throughout Pellegrini's managerial era, but very few of them were turning out to be good. City still largely depended on the spine hired under Mancini and before, namely Aguero, Company, Silva, Toure, Joe Hart, etc. Fernandinho was a good acquisition, but defensive frailties remained despite multiple recruitments in defensive positions of the likes of Bakari Sanya, Ilakim Mengala, and Martin Di Michaelis. City ended up behind Chelsea by 8 points in the 2014-15 Premier League season and yet again went out to Barcelona in the round of 16 of Champions League. City also had a sh horror show in the cup competitions, crashing out of both FA Cup and League Cup in the fourth round. The season went trophyless and the situation only got worse the next season. 2015-16 Premier League season is famous for Leicester City's miraculous run to the Premier League title. But this season was the worst Manchester City performed in the Premier League since the 2010-11 season. Ending up fourth with just 66 points, the lowest in this period. City's performances in the Champions League were better. They won their group and made it all the way to the semi-finals beating Dynamo Kiev and Paris Saint-Germain in the process. However, they lost narrowly to Real Madrid and it meant Champions League was yet too far of a step for this Manchester City team. They however did win a trophy, winning League Cup against Liverpool on penalties in the final. Overall, the season was a disappointment and it was clear that Manchester City's lofty ambitions were a bit too big to be fulfilled by Pellegrini. Since the Abu Dhabi takeover of Manchester City, the new owners had poured almost a billion pounds in transfers, brought in some of the best players in their positions, had improved the stadium and established a very good academy and yet 
They had only won two Premier League titles, two League Cups and one FA Cup in those eight seasons. The success on the pitch wasn't really matching with the investment they had made. It was time to get to the next level and they made the move. Pep Guardiola is regarded as one of the best coaches in football. He had transformed Barcelona, winning 14 trophies with them that included three La Liga titles and two Champions Leagues. After a season sabbatical, he joined Bayern and found more success, winning three consecutive Bundesliga titles. So when Pep Guardiola was announced as the manager of Manchester City, people took notice. Some didn't think Pep Guardiola's tactics would work in a physical league like the Premier League. Some doubted if this Manchester City team had the quality of Pep's previous clubs like Barcelona or Bayern Munich. Despite all the doubts, there was also a case of optimism among the City fans who knew that a team comprising of the likes of Aguero, David Silva, Toure, Company, Kevin De Bruyne had enough quality to succeed. Manchester City had been working behind the scenes to make the transition for Pep as smooth as possible. Pep's old bosses at Barcelona, Chiqui Begiristain and Ferran Soriano had been hired by Manchester City four years prior and were looking to hire Guardiola ever since. Guardiola rung out immediate changes and the biggest casualty of his changes was Joe Hart. Joe Hart was considered to be one of the best shot stoppers in the Premier League and had been Manchester City's first choice keeper since 2010. However, unimpressed by Hart's skills on the ball, Guardiola froze him out of the first team, deeming him unfit to play a sweeper-keeper role that Guardiola wanted before eventually loaning him out to Torino. Aguero too saw his minutes reduced as Guardiola wanted a striker who was adept at pressing as well. Toure's agent's comments saw Toure too sidelined before he finally apologized and was allowed back in the team. Manchester City's defense needed bolstering too as Vincent Kompany was spending more and more time in the infirmary. So John Stones and Nicolas Otamendi were brought in. Joe Hart was replaced by Claudio Bravo. Gundogan, Nolito, Sané and Gabriel Jesus were also signed this season. It seemed Guardiola was hard at work to mold City into his vision. The changes, however, didn't work in his first season. After a bright start, City struggled through the mid-season and fell behind Chelsea and Tottenham Hotspurs for most of the season, eventually ending up third, 15 points behind the eventual champions, Chelsea. Claudio Bravo proved to be a disaster between the sticks and was dropped in favour of City's backup keeper Willy Caballero midway through the season. City's fullbacks Zabaleta, Clichy, Kolarov, or Sonia just couldn't keep up with pacey wingers. Defeats away to Leicester by a margin of 4 goals to 2 and at Everton by the margin of 4-0 really showed deficiencies in City's defence and the Champions League elimination in the round of 16 at the hands of Monaco which saw City going out on away goals despite scoring 5 goals at home just solidified City's defence needing an overhaul despite the summer acquisitions. Guardiola's first season in the Premier League went trophyless his first ever season and questions were being asked if the tactics can actually work in England. After an unsuccessful first season, Guardiola knew he had to make sweeping changes to the team. Gone were the aging fullbacks, meaning all of Sanya, Kolarov, Clichy and Zabaleta were gone. Also gone were the backup keeper Caballero and last season's acquisition Nolito. Kyle Walker, Benjamin Mendy and Danilo joined to bolster the defence. Claudio Bravo was relegated to the backup keeper role as Edison was brought in. Bernardo Silva too joined this season. The January transfer window saw Aymeric Laporte coming over from Athletic Bilbao. In all, City spent a total of over £250 million in this one season their biggest outlay in a single season. And the extravagant spending bore fruit immediately. 
City went on an undefeated streak of 22 Premier League games which included 18 consecutive victories, the longest streak of all time in the English football. Manchester City became the first Premier League team to accumulate 100 points in a season, winning Guardiola's first Premier League title, usurping a distant second Manchester United by 19 points. City were crowned champions with five games still remaining in the season. Such was their dominance. Not only that, City also went on an incredible cup run, winning the League Cup beating Arsenal 3-0 in the final. A league and cup triumph couldn't be, however, extended to the Champions League, The City went out to Liverpool in the quarter-finals. They were knocked out of the FA Cup by their old nemesis, Wigan Athletic, in the fifth round. Despite these losses, it was a highly successful second season for Guardiola, ending with a league and domestic cup double. 2018-19 season proved to be an even bigger success. City's only big acquisition of the season was Riyad Mahrez from Leicester, while a lot of players left the club. Biggest among them were Yaya Toure and Joe Hart. Manchester City had a team that was firing on all cylinders. Aguero, Sterling, De Bruyne, Gundogan, David Silva, Bernardo Silva, Leroy Sané, Fernandinho, Laporte, Ederson, etc. made for a fearsome team. And fearsome they proved on the field. Manchester City swept all the domestic trophies available, winning the Premier League, League Cup, FA Cup and even the curtain raiser, the FA Community Shield. This season also saw the emergence of Klopp led Liverpool, who matched City step by step, eventually falling short by just one point in the league. City and Liverpool accrued 98 and 97 points respectively, the highest total for number one and number two teams in the league ever. This season also proved to be the last for City's captain for the last decade, Vincent Kompany who capped off a glowing career with a league-winning goal against Leicester. However, the Champions League was becoming a bane for Manchester City. In one of the most dramatic quarterfinals, City were knocked out by the eventual finalists Tottenham Hotspurs on away goals, which saw a chaotic second leg played at the Etihad. Despite the Champions League heartbreak, this was City's most successful season ever, it seemed. City were primed for a three-peat. Alas, it was not to be. The 2019-20 Premier League season saw Manchester City start slowly. City lost their best defender in Laporta early in the season and then never recovered. With company having departed and not being replaced and Stones too struggling with fitness and form, City's defence was in shambles. But it was not all. The beginning of 2020 saw the COVID-19 pandemic sweep the world and it had its effect on football too. Football was suspended for a period of time and when it resumed, it didn't feel the same for a long time. The season petered out for City, who had to contend with a solitary trophy in the League Cup. City ended a distant second behind a rampant Liverpool who won their first Premier League trophy ever and the first First Division League trophy in 30 years. Manchester City's woeful Champions League luck continued as well as they were knocked out at the quarterfinal stage again, this time by Lyon. After two highly successful seasons, this season proved to be a damp squib and the dream of three-peat never materialised. It was apparent that City's defence needed shoring up. Form had left Otamendi, who saw his time curtailed, while Laporta and Stone struggled with fitness issues. Otamendi left for Porto, making space for Ruben Diaz. Nathan Ake was also brought in from a relegated Bournemouth. In attack, Leroy Sane's head was turned by Bayern Munich, and a German usually cannot resist that kind of temptation. City tried to replace him with Ferran Torres. However, City started poorly, and after the first nine games, City were as low as 13th in the Premier League table. In fact, City were languishing at 8th as late as game 16, but this City team knows how to go on a run. Manchester City went on a 13-game win streak mid-season, overcoming everyone above them. 
and went to the top of the table in the 20th game and didn't look back. The final table didn't show City's poor start as they comfortably ran with the league, ending 12 points clear of Manchester United to win the third league title in four seasons. City's fortune turned in the Champions League as well. After three consecutive Champions League campaigns where they faltered at the quarterfinal stage, they went above and beyond, beating the likes of Borussia Dortmund and Paris Saint-Germain in the process to reach their first ever Champions League final. Alas, City faltered yet again in an important Champions League game, this time losing to Tuchel's Chelsea 1-0. Chelsea was a thorn in Guardiola's side as they also beat City in the FA Cup semi-final by the same score. City did manage to win the League Cup, beating Arsenal, Manchester United and Tottenham Hotspurs in the quarter-finals, semi-finals and the finals respectively. It was a great comeback for a City team after a Covid-ravaged season and it was looking like finally the owner's goal of transforming Manchester City into a footballing juggernaut was bearing fruits. The 2021-22 season saw Manchester City making the most expensive signing of all time in English football, to be broken by Chelsea the very next season, when they signed Jack Grealish from Aston Villa for a reported £100 million. Ferran Torres left for Barcelona, but overall there was minimal changes to the City first team that won the league and reached the Champions League final the last season. City started slowly yet again, however, as we've all become accustomed to, City went on a 12-game win streak in the middle of the season to take up the first position in the table. This time again, City were chased by a relentless Liverpool who kept very close to them since losing the first position. On the Champions League front, Manchester City went past Sporting and Atletico Madrid in the round of 16 and the quarterfinals and then took a lead against Real Madrid in the home leg, beating them 4-3. This was the edition of Champions League that saw the away goal rule scraped, which meant the away goals didn't matter in the grand scheme of things. It seemed City were en route a second consecutive Champions League final when they took the lead through Mahrez in the second leg at Santiago Bernabeu around 73rd minute. However, it proved to be one of the most dramatic semi-final clashes of all time. Manchester City, who led the tie 5-3 till the 90th minute, conceded twice under a minute by Camavinga. Benzema has done very well to get it across and they have scored. Kawahala Stewart rightly says made a couple of really good chances and he's made a goal. Oh, how can you believe it, Rodrigo again? Unbelievable! And then conceded another goal through a penalty to lose the semi final. Try and find a penalty that's unstoppable and he's done that. Yet again, Champions League proved to be a step too far. However, it didn't deter them from performing in the Premier League. In a yet another dramatic final day, Manchester City went two goals down to Aston Villa before a six minutes bliss saw City score three goals. Gundogan scored twice to win the tie 3-2. Manchester City had won the league yet again by just a point over Liverpool. The season brought only one trophy, but it was the Premier League which meant they had now won four of the last five Premier League titles. Guardiola had turned Manchester City into a league-winning machine. And so we rolled into the current season. City brought in Erling Haaland who broke all kinds of goal scoring records having scored 52 goals in all competitions at the time of making of this video. Tactical innovations like transforming Stones into a more advanced defensive midfield role meant City became even more solid in defence. After trailing Arsenal for most of the season, City yet again went on a 12 game win streak in the Premier League. While Arsenal collapsed at the final hurdle, City completed their three-peat and won a fifth league title in six seasons with three games to spare. Manchester City's Champions League campaign seems like a campaign of a team possessed. The Champions League knockout home game scores read 7-0, 3-0 and 4-0. 
beating RB Leipzig in the round of 16, Bayern Munich in the quarterfinals and Real Madrid in the semi-finals 8-1, 4-1 and 5-1 respectively on aggregate. The wins against the heavyweights like Bayern and Madrid stand out the most. Manchester City are now in the Champions League final for the second time in three seasons, this time taking on Inter. City are also in the FA Cup final to take on Manchester United, the first time this derby is happening in the FA Cup final. An unprecedented treble is for the taking. Can City do it or not? remains to be seen but you all know this is not the end of the story we could leave it here but we all know the rise of manchester city has more to it as a club with as long a history as manchester city controversies are bound to be part of that like how Manchester City were found to be guilty of breaking the rules of the league during the 1904-05 season when it was found that City were making additional payments to their players over the then weekly cap of £4 a week. 17 players were fined and suspended until January 1907 while City were forced to sell their players. However. It is the recent controversies and allegations that cast a question mark over the club's current success. Since the Abu Dhabi takeover, Manchester City have been constantly accused of financial doping. In 2014, UEFA sanctioned Manchester City for breaching the newly introduced financial fair play rules, fining them £49 million and restricting their Champions League squad to just 21 men instead of the usual 25 men. It was later reduced to 16 million pounds. However, the biggest bombshell in the Abu Dhabi Man City era dropped in 2018 when T.S. Spiegel ran a report that claimed Manchester City owners had broken many financial fair play rules, that they had falsely disguised equity money as sponsorships and that some sponsorship deals were inflated due to the relationship to the Abu Dhabi owners themselves like the Etihad or Etisalat. Multiple leaked emails were published and sparked a worldwide controversy. UEFA took notice and began to investigate. In February 2020, UEFA banned Manchester City for two years from competing in the Champions League, citing serious breaches of FFP rules and fined 30 million euros for failing to cooperate with the investigation. City were found to have overstated sponsorship revenue and break-even information in accounts submitted to UEFA between 2012 and 2016. City pled not guilty and appealed to the Court of Arbitration of Sports in Switzerland. While CAS upheld the punishment for failing to cooperate with the investigation, CAS did overturn the ban citing the fact that most of the alleged breaches were either not established or time-barred. They also reduced the fine from 30 million euros to 10 million euros. Manchester City lawyers called this a huge victory. But City's troubles didn't end here. J.S. Pagel released more leaked emails, citing more financial irregularities and in light of these allegations and UEFA verdict, the Premier League started to investigate. In February 2023, in another big bombshell, Premier League had brought more than 115 charges against Manchester City relating to alleged financial irregularities between 2009-10 and 2017-18 and failing to cooperate with investigations since 2018 and have been referred to an independent commission. Manchester City have yet again denied any wrongdoing. As of now, the case is still ongoing and from various reports. It seems it could take months or even years before any verdict is reached. The Manchester City owners have also been called out regularly due to their country's human rights records and called Manchester City a sports washing project as in it is a vehicle to make the owner's image more palatable. Despite all the allegations and controversies, Manchester City have gone from strength to strength. Manchester City's rise can be attributed to many factors. While people love pointing to the unprecedented money poured into the club, it's also a fact that money 
alone cannot buy success, not without a proper plan. We don't have to look any further than Manchester United, the local rivals who have spent almost the same amount of money in the same period and haven't had anywhere near that kind of success in this period. Manchester City's long-suffering, self-deprecating fans who stuck with the team through the thick and thin have a reason to enjoy their recent success. Manchester City have become an English footballing behemoth and at the time of making of this video are stood at the cusp of history. Like the video if you liked it, share if you find it worthy and subscribe for more such videos. This is Salty Football. Thank you for watching.